We are starting off with questions on the homework packet. After that, we're going to page 317. Ah, oh, good. Mr. Craig, would you like to drive on a field trip on Friday? Not, not us. Uh, uh, Vacaville. We're leaving early, so 6.45. But we're back by 2.30. The link crew, not us. I have a van signed out. We need a mat field trip, huh? Yeah, we should go to Okay, quiet, please. Hey, Mr. Marwig. Mr. Marwig. Uh, time for a cup of Joe. Coffee time? That never gets old. Mr. Marwig, do you want to drive on a field trip with me? Friday. He, he raises his coffee. I'll talk to him later. <laughs> I don't know how well they can hear over there. Okay. It's probably time we start this. I'm on page 304 in the homework packet. And Molly had a question. Molly, what was your question? No, it was just a question on this one. Okay, excuse me. Ah. Okay. Um, what you may need to do is up on the top. Okay, here's Molly's question. She was doing this at home and didn't have a graphing calculator. So she was using Desmos. Okay, and uh, what you do to adjust the window in Desmos is up in the top right-hand corner is a little thing where you can adjust the grid. And so you got to find that little thing top right-hand corner, and if you click on it, it sets the things where you can do a X-min and a Y-min, you know, an X-min and an X-max, Y-min and Y-max. And that may be what you needed. I don't know. Okay, uh, but so I guess she's figured this out now that she has a graphing calculator. Other people, questions on the homework packet? Wait, I got something for you, Alden. I was looking at uh, progress. Is that uh, one of the journals? Okay, so those are the two that I see you still need. There's another one that I'll share with you. Well, I got caught up yesterday, I think. But if I need to go back in and find more, uh, I'll go back in. Yeah, you. I guess it says there's two that uh, you didn't like. It's they say they're still in progress. That's one of them. But okay. So either you need to reshare or I need to relook. But I went through all my emails and okay, put everything I'll, I'll in yesterday. Okay. Other homework packet, Oscar. Fifteen. Fifteen. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, these are hard. <clears throat> okay. Uh, these are hard, but not beyond you. Okay. The reason that they're hard, Brian, is because they're quadratic functions. Now, quadratic function, we looked at at the beginning of the year. Uh, they have x squareds in them, and the shape will be like a u, okay? But what you need to do is, if I was doing this, I would have three columns to work stuff out. They're not giving me this in the space, so maybe over here to the side, I'm going to make a new column, x squared 
plus 4x. Because what you need to do is you need to take the x's they give you and you're doing a whole bunch of little tiny problems substituting numbers in for x. So if they're saying let x be 2, now I got to do this. I got to go 2 squared plus 4 times 2. Is that big enough for you to see? And then I do that. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. That's what the y is going to equal. 1 squared plus 4 times 1. So you're taking the x and substituting it in. 1 goes right here, and 1 goes right there. 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. So now I've got to add 1 plus 4 is 5. 0 plus 4 times 0. That's easy. Minus 1 squared plus 4 times minus 1. And, it, and actually, it may be uh, easier for you to do that kind of thing on separate paper. Because already I'm seeing it's a little complicated, and I, I'm getting squished over there. So if I go minus 1 squared plus 4 times minus 1, that's a positive 1, because a minus times a minus is a positive. 4 times minus 1 is a negative 4. What happens when I add these two? Negative 3 is what we get for y. Now we're using minus 2. Minus 2 squared plus 4 times minus 2. 4, because minus 2 times minus 2 turns positive. And, but 4 times a negative is negative 8. What happens when we add those two? Negative what? Negative 4 is what happens in the y when x is minus 2. Minus 3. Minus 3 squared plus 4 times minus 3. Each time you're plugging that x in in two places. You're squaring it. You're timesing it by 4, and then what you get, you simplify and add together. Minus 3 times minus 3 is positive 9. 4 times minus 3 is negative 12. Now I add those two together, and that's what goes right here for my y. Okay. Um, let's see if there's a way to do it on a graphing calculator. This is the way to do it. If you don't, if you're at home and don't have a graphing calculator, oh, let's finish this one. What would that be? Negative 3. Negative 3, right? If I was going to do it on a graphing calculator, I would go y equals clear. I'd put in this function, x, let's uh, square it, plus 4 times x. And then I'm going to do a table. I'm going to go second table set to start. I'm going to start the smallest number is minus 6. And these are going up by 1 each time. So I go to table set to get the right kinds of numbers as the x's. Now I go second table all right, and here we are, minus 4. When x is minus 4, what do you see for y? 0. When x is minus 5, what do you see for y? 5. When x is minus 6, what do you see for y? 12. So if you own a graphing calculator or you're working in a support class, you may put these in and make it do a table for you using the y equals function. But if you're not, you're just doing a little problem. It's not that hard, but it's repetitive over and over. Now, here's what you need to do with it. All of these points we're going to graph. 2, 12 means 2 over, 12 up.
One five means one over five up. Zero zero minus one, one two three down. Minus two, one two three four down. Minus three, minus three. Zero, excuse me, minus four, zero. Minus five, one, two, three, four, five. And minus six, 12. Oh, ho, ho, what do you see? There we go, it curves up this way. Goes down, changes direction, curves up that way. That's how you do these. Um, oh, I see on the bottom they uh, don't give you x's. So on the bottom you're going to go x, y, and you're going to choose some numbers. I think uh, both of these are going to be fairly symmetric. If they're fairly symmetric, you should probably choose the same numbers that are up here uh, in this one. Notice how these are positive 4 to negative 4 with 0 in the middle. So if you think it's pretty much going to be in the middle of your graph, these are good numbers. All right? So I would do the... But you can, you can decide what you want. You can throw it into tables and uh, try it out. Uh, different ways and see what looks the best. All right. But again, if I was going to do something like this one down here on the bottom, uh, x times y equals 10. That's my function. Okay. Uh, so uh, if I want to solve for y in this one, I probably want to get y by itself in the function. To get y by itself in the function, I'm going to divide by an x, divide by an x. y equals 10 divided by x. Oh, I see. Now, now I'm rethinking this. I'm going to pick numbers that go into 10. That's going to make my divide easy. Excuse me? Put a zero after everything. Put a zero after everything. Nice. Well, those might give decimals, though, right? Because uh, those are divisible by 10, but those are all going to be fractions. Um, let's see. Um, or how about this? I'm going to keep those same numbers that we had, OK? And I'm going to do it with the table. Remember how that works? Uh, first of all, go to y equals. Get rid of the last function. Second of all, here's my function. This is 10 divided by x. 10 divided by, can you see this? x. I'm going to go to table set. Second, table set. This time my smallest number is negative 4. And I'm going up by 1. And now I'm going to go to table by pushing second table. It's right above the graph. All right. I'm going to have, oh, that's cool. Look it. What's in the middle there? Why is that? That's because 0, 10 divided by 0, the calculator doesn't know what to do with. All right. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to take, we can go ahead and copy down numbers, negative uh, 2.5, negative 3.3, negative 5, negative 10, error, 10, 5, uh, 3.3, 2.5, what do you notice? Do you notice anything here? They're all the same except for the negative x's. So negative, yeah. so they are symmetric in some way. I kind of figured they were symmetric. I'm going to see what it looks like on a graph. 
let's do my window. Uh, my bottom and top x's are minus 4 and 4, so minus 4, positive 4. My bottom y's are negative 10 is the smallest, and positive 10 is the biggest. X, y min negative 10, x min positive 10. Okay, graph. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I get excited about small things. There's our graph. Look at that thing. Can we replicate that over here? Okay, uh, we do have numbers to help us. At zero, we have nothing. At one, we're at ten. So here's one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. At two, we're at five. At three, we're at three and a third. One, two, three, and a little bit more. At four, we're at 2.5. So here's 2, 2.5. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing, this part. And what I can see that it does on my graphing calculator is goes that way. And then what it says, error, it never touches this x-axis. It never becomes x equals 0. Or excuse me, uh, it never becomes, even when x is 0, it just never is there. Okay, now on the other side, uh, at minus 10, it's minus, excuse me, at minus 1, it's minus 10. So here's minus 1. Okay, uh, then at minus 2, it's minus 5. At minus 3, it's 3.3. 3. Here's 3 and a little more. At minus 4, it's 2.5. And here's what we have. Woohoo! That was good. All right. Uh, set the packet aside. We do have a couple things we're supposed to look at in our book right now.